Hey everybody, today I am finally able to do an official charging test of my Kia EV6 at a Tesla supercharger. I have my A to Z adapter and I am ready to go. I am down to 5% indicated state of charge, 10% BMS state of charge, and we're gonna do a 10% to 80% test and see how long it takes. All right, I just initiated the charge in the Tesla app. Remember, you can also use the Kia app using the new charge pass feature. I'll go ahead and plug into the A to Z adapter that I already connected to my EV6. And then after a few seconds, it starts charging. There we go. I'll time it from there. Don't worry, I'll fast forward through a lot of it, so this isn't a really long video. You can see I'm now up to 6% indicated state of charge. BMF state of charge is now 10.5%. Remember, there's a buffer at the top and bottom of the battery pack, which is why the BMS state of charge is different than the indicated state of charge. We'll time it using the indicated state of charge, going from 10% to 80% and also 90%. I'll show a charge curve graph at the end as well. You can see we are going strong here now at 96.8 kilowatts or so, and it should stay relatively flat for the majority of the test. Remember, until Tesla starts deploying V4 superchargers, the EV6 and other EGMP vehicles have to use the rear motor to step up the voltage, and unfortunately that limits the power output. Now, 97 kilowatts isn't a super high number like the 240 to 250 you can get at an 800 volt station like Electrify America, but with a flat charge curve, it shouldn't take too terribly long to charge. So we'll let it charge here, and I'll provide some updates and comments as it goes. All right, we just hit 10% indicated state of charge at 2 minutes and 47 seconds on the timer. So that'll be the start of the 10% to 80% test. And we are still going strong here at just under 97 kilowatts. All right, it's been 10 minutes since we hit 10% and we are at 30% now. So we gained 20% there. We went from six kilowatt hours of battery energy available to 19.4 kilowatt hours. Now, rough math using three and a half miles per kilowatt hour as an estimate, that's about 47 miles of range in 10 minutes, which isn't too bad. All right, another 10 minutes have gone by and we are still at just under 97 kilowatts and we gain another 20%, so we're at 50% state of charge. So 10% to 50% in 20 minutes, and that's pretty good. Hey guys, right here you'll notice the video changes. I had an issue with my S25 Ultra overheating and the sunlight with the case on it, so I had to quickly change phones I was using to record, which took about 20 seconds. I did verify using the car scanner timer, and I adjusted the timer on this video to account for this, so the timer on the video is still accurate, but I just wanted to make you guys aware. All right, now we have been charging for 30 minutes and from 10% state of charge, we're up to 69% and we've added just over 40 kilowatt hours of energy. So that's about 140 miles of range based off of three and a half miles per kilowatt hour, which isn't bad at all. And again, we're still perfectly flat at just under 97 kilowatts. Now, one thing I do want to show you here with the A to Z adapter is the temperature. I got this thermal camera from HFS Tools, which works really well. I highly recommend it. Uh, but you can see the hot points here. And the Tesla connector is where the heat really is. The adapter into the car isn't getting too hot at all. Honestly, both of them aren't getting super hot. So that's good to see. It's working well. Okay, we just hit 80% indicated state of charge at 38 minutes, 33 seconds on the timer. So it took just under 36 minutes to go from 10% to 80% state of charge. 
and that's not too bad. Some EVs out there under optimal conditions can't even do that on any charger, so that's good to see. We'll keep going from here up past 90%. Let me raise my DC charge limit. And just now at 83% indicated state of charge, it just dropped the charge rate considerably below 10 kilowatts. This is normal for eGMP vehicles. They drop here for a few minutes after 80% state of charge and then they ramp back up. So we'll see how long this lasts. All right, it just ramped back up after just over three minutes. And we are back to just under 97 kilowatts. And now as soon as it hit 84% state of charge on the BMS state of charge, which is the true state of charge of the battery, it started throttling the charge rate. We are down in the 60 to 70 kilowatt range now. And it will slowly start to come down here as the state of charge gets higher. Okay, we hit 90% indicated state of charge after just over 45 minutes from the 10% mark. So not bad at all, considering the three minutes we had at the very low charge rate. And we're still charging at over 40 kilowatts right now. And here we're at 92.5% indicated state of charge and the charge rate has slowed to a little over 30 kilowatts. So we'll go ahead and stop here. First though, I'll show you Kia's estimated time to 100% from 93% here is 15 minutes. So you can see it really slows down at the top end of the battery pack. So you only wanna go that high on a road trip if you really need the extra few percent. So final thoughts after looking at everything, it has a very flat charge curve when charging the Tesla supercharger. You can see it charges at just under 97 kilowatts, basically the entire time until just over 80% state of charge. Then it has that blip where it drops down for a few minutes and then it comes back up and then it slowly tapers off from there. It's definitely not as fast as high voltage chargers like Electrify America where the Kia EV6 and Ionic 5 other eGMP vehicles uh, quote 10% 80% charge times of just 18 minutes. This takes roughly twice as long um, but that said it's not that bad. Uh, there's several EVs out there that are very popular that have charge times that are maybe five minutes faster, like uh, Tesla Model Y, Tesla Model 3, uh, the new Chevy Blazer EV. There's even some new EVs that charge slower, like the Acura ZDX, the Honda Prologue. They take over 40 minutes to do 10%, 80%. So in reality, it's not that bad at all. So overall, I'm very pleased with the performance. Having Tesla superchargers available for our vehicles definitely opens up options. I know a lot of people may not want to necessarily use Tesla superchargers, but having the options available, I think is a big benefit for us. Uh, there's obviously a ton of Tesla superchargers out there and they're widely known to be the most reliable uh, DC fast charging stations uh, out there. And a lot of people have had issues at Electrify America and EV Go stations in the past. And with Tesla superchargers, that is much more rare. So I'm really excited about that. The A to Z adapter also worked really well. I can definitely recommend it. Um, remember, Kia does say that they only uh, officially uh, allow the uh, Kia branded adapter. Uh, but if you were to have an issue, Kia would actually have to prove that some sort of charging issue uh, occurred because of the adapter for any kind of warranty work to not be uh, covered. That said, I definitely would only stick to A to Z or Electron or the Kia adapter. I'll be testing the Electron adapter uh, in the coming weeks as well. Um, I already have one, I just have to actually test it. Um, but I would only stick to those. They're very well known, highly rated, they work great. Um, I would definitely not get any kind of cheap random adapter off Amazon. Uh, because you're talking about a lot of, of current uh, flowing through these adapters. So anyway, I hope this video was helpful for you guys. If you liked the video, be sure to hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe for more content. Let me know if you have any questions about this. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next video.